Hi Kingdom greetings and welcome to the Ex Prophet where I believe that one word from God can change our lives together. Apologies for coming back only now after some weeks of not finishing on part 5 on Kingdom Obedience but today we will cover and we will finish the whole series on obedience. Amen. So I've been speaking on obedience for a while and uh, today uh, part 5 will be speaking on Jesus who is the pinnacle of absolute obedience even to the point of death which means he was the highest point he was the most successful and uh, I believe that if we can reach that that Christ has set as an example we will get far when it comes to obedience in the kingdom of God from the first part and right through I've been speaking about there's a vast difference between obedience that we find in the kingdom in general and obedience that we find in the local church. Those who have Bibles, turn with me to Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9, which I'm going to read and I'm going to speak on that quickly because I believe that there's something God wants to say even in conclusion when it comes to the obedience and the series of obedience. Now, verse 8, the Word of God says, and being found, that's what I'm speaking about Christ, and being found in appearance as a man, which means immediately the writer is telling us that the one that has set an example to the highest point of success in obedience was just as man as we are today. We have feelings, we have areas that we are struggling with, whichever way we're looking at as a human being, Christ came as an example and set the bar and the set the bar high for us, but as a man, which means if he could do it, we can do it. Now he says, and being found in appearance as a man, which means we were not dealing with an angel, we were not dealing with God directly, we were do dealing with Christ or Jesus Christ as a man who he humbled himself, which is the first criteria for absolute obedience. If you really want to walk in obedience to God, there must be obedience. Now in my previous parts, I spoke uh, on, obe- uh, on humbleness and how humbleness is a catalyst to obedience, absolute obedience, uh, successful obedience, and where we, in walking with God, in humbleness, we will be successful in obedience. He says, he humbled himself and became obedience. He humbled himself and became obedience. That's the first level, even to the point of death, right? He humbled himself, became obedience to the point of death. Now, that's the first thing that was already in the mind of Christ, that I will stay humble and I will stay obedient uh, to what God is saying to me, the instructions that will come to my life. But then they continue, he says, even to the death of the cross, which means there was a different elevation of obedience. There was a different uh, responsibility of obedience. There was a difference when God was requiring obedience to the point of death, even to the point of he must finish uh, this assignment on the cross. The word of God continues, says, therefore God, in verse 9, also has highly, therefore God also has highly exalted him. So exaltation comes, elevation comes as we walk humbly in the obedience of God. He says, Uh, exalted him and given him the name which is above every name. Now, uh, that that's important for me to understand. And it's important for you to understand. There's one thing we must understand that if you want God to uplift us, to exalt us, and to, to bring us to a point where uh, we will be recognized in such a manner, then we must know that we have to submit under the mind of God, the instructions of God, the directions of God for our lives. Now, when I speak about uh, humbleness and when I speak about obedience and when I speak about Christ, I, I cannot speak about Jesus. I cannot speak about him without referring to righteousness. I cannot refer to Christ without referring to justification. Now, justification for any born again believer or any Christian that wants to walk in uprightness before God and wants to walk in obedience with God, you cannot walk in obedience if you haven't got a full understanding of justification. Because if for me to understand justification is like having this understanding, I'm walking before God and I'm walking in the righteousness, but my righteousness and my justification is seen like this. Justification just as if I've never failed, never sinned, never, never uh, uh, offended God. Righteousness, I'm in right standing with God. It's difficult for someone to be in right standing with God if you cannot even walk 
in having an understanding that I am being justified. I am I'm, I'm like somebody has never failed before. So if your past is walking up against you or your past is menacing to you and you're still struggling how to overcome pain, past pain, past hurt, past rejections, past trauma, and you cannot overcome that, your, your justification is already challenging. Whatever's happened in the past that has been negative and that is still and that still has an influence on your current walk with God, that means that your area of not seeing yourself worthy, not seeing yourself as uh, I am in Christ and now I can walk with my head up high and I can walk and my head up straight and I can look uh, God so to speak in the eye and in the face and in and saying to him Lord that I want to be used by you. The problem with many Christians is they the justification part of their lives where they're in, in, uh, in right standing with God uh, that part of their lives make that they cannot walk in total obedience because total obedience or full obedience or compliance to the instructions of God in obedience and walking in harmless means that I have to forgive I have to walk away from I have to sever I have to cut ties I have to start over make my mind up Romans 12 1 and 2 I must submit my mind to be renewed if we cannot submit our minds to be renewed it's difficult for us to walk in a place of Lord I'm in a place where uh, in your midst and in your presence uh, as if I've never sinned Lord there's no self-condemnation and I'm not gonna allow anybody to condemn my, my, my life my existence my walk in God from the outside so I'm not gonna allow outside influence to condemn my life because I'm I am in your presence Lord just as if I've never done these things before righteousness in and uh, on the other hand of, of course speaks about where I'm in the right standing with God so my mind is set I'm in the right standing with God but righteousness has four parts as the cross has four parts righteousness I have to be in the right standing with myself I have to make peace with myself where I am in my life where I'm walking with God in myself I must be in the right standing with who I am as an individual that is first and foremost so when Christ by salvation brings me to the cross my mind must be said that Christ is bringing me to the fullness of righteousness only found in him so which means the righteousness that Christ is projecting or Christ is giving as a gift that righteous means that I will make peace with myself I will come in the right standing with myself. I will come in the right position with myself. I will make an effort to find myself, to discover myself, and to be on a journey inwardly and see where God wants to heal me, deliver me, and set me free. My right standing uh, uh, when I come to Christ is my right standing with the Father, where I walk uh, in righteousness with Him, in right standing with Him, where I want to please the Father, where I want to walk in obedience to every instruction that the Father is giving me. My right standing or my righteousness is also in how I, I in, in, interact with my brothers and my sisters in the house of God. How is my walk with them? How is my love walk with them? How is my walk of and peace with them? How do I submit? How am I walking in, in forgiveness with my brother and my sister? Is there peace in my heart towards them? Am I submissive to my leadership? Am I committed to the cause, to the peace, to, to whatever God has given? My right standing also to my other side is to those that are in the world that I must still uh, uh, witness to, that I must still bring to the knowledge of Christ, that I must still love walk them to the cross and peace walk them to the cross and obedient walk them to the cross and to the salvation. That, of course, is also making the four parts of the cross in my righteousness with God, my righteousness with Christ, my righteousness in Christ and in God. So all of this is important. Now, the Bible says that in Romans chapter 5, verse 19, it says, by one man's obedience, many will be righteous. Now that's key because I just spoke on righteousness. So if you want, if you want somebody to come to the righteousness uh, of Christ, then we must bring them through our love walk, our peace walk, our walk of obedience and forgiveness, and uh, our walk of commitment to Christ. That one in itself is saying that Lord, I'm humble enough to follow you. I'm obedient enough to follow you. Now. You, Lord Jesus, that is what I will say. You are my pinnacle. You are my example. You are my, my highest point of obedience. You are my 
truest obe uh, example of obedience. So which means if you brought in obedience, the Bible says, in, again, I'm going to read Romans 5, 19. Verse 19 says, by one man's obedience will be right, many will be righteous. So I'm walking in the righteousness because of Christ's obedience. If Christ could do obedience, I can do obedience. Let me go quickly to Hebrew chapter uh, 5, verse 8 to 9. It says, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience. He learned obedience, which means we have to set our minds. We have to set our inner being. We have to set our journey that I will learn obedience. Obedience is taught. As we teach our children obedience, as we rear them in obedience, obedience is taught. The Word of God teaches us how to walk in obedience. If you want to learn and if you want to walk in uh, complete and total obedience, if you want to walk in total righteousness, total obedience, total commitment to God, we have to understand what the Word of God is saying. Now Hebrew 5 verses 8 to 9 says, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience. What, how? How did he learn obedience? He learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Now, beloved, that is key for us to walk in obedience. Our our daily suffering I encountered as we, since we were small, since we were young, and as we grew up and now we came to the cross, now we came to salvation, now we find our obedience in Christ and we find Him as an example of true obedience. Now our suffering, our suffering brings us to a point of obedience. How? Because now we learn. We learn from the things we that we suffered from. And the Bible says, and having been perfected, he became the author. So walking in obedience, as we learn through suffering, it will bring us to a place of perfection. Amen. A place of perfection in Christ. The word of God says, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey. So if I really want to see eternal salvation, I have to walk in obedience. In order for me to walk successfully in obedience, I must also learn from my suffering. And I must learn obedience through my suffering. That is what Hebrews chapter 5 verses 8 to 9 is saying. So obedience reflects the glory of God. Obedience is the mark of salvation. And beloved, if there's nothing else today uh, that I'm speaking on, uh, when I speak about the pinnacle Christ, the pinnacle of obedience, we have to understand that Christ set an example. And if we follow Christ, then we will come to the pinnacle of obedience, the perfection of obedience, where righteousness will if not even be challenging in our minds. We won't even be challenged in how we walk before God. And there will be no self-condemnation. There will be no self-judgment. Why? Because I'm walking in complete humbleness as I learn from my areas that I suffer in. And the highest point of obedience which is Christ, I will embrace Him and He will clothe me with His righteousness the fullness of His image. Now the Word of God is what we must use as a plumb line how to walk in absolute obedience. So uh, beloved, in conclusion, I want us to have this understanding. If you really want to walk in obedience, we must walk in obedience in building a true relationship with Christ. As Christ endured His suffering, we must endure our suffering. As Christ walked in harmonious during his suffering, we must walk in humbleness during our suffering. As Christ set an example for us to become righteous through obedience, we must set an example in obedience so that many can come to the place of righteousness in Christ and they must then come to a place of, of, of salvation and a place of deliverance. And beloved, whatever we want to do for God, whatever we want to do for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is advancing because of us that are walking in obedience. Our obedience brings unity. Our obedience brings love. Our obedience brings peace. Our obedience brings joy. And so the Bible says, the world will see through our obedience, through our unity, through our love for one another, that we are children of God and that we walk in obedience and so the world will be saved, delivered and set free and bring into the kingdom of God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord let his face sign upon you until we see again with the next series and the next topic I will speak on. For those who are interested in hearing more of this kind of teachings, please uh, leave a comment 
in the comment section below and uh, ask me uh, uh, find out which topic you would love me to speak on and I'll come back to you and I trust God that we will speak on that also I'm trusting God that we will uh, be building a community on one of the social media platforms where we will interact where we will engage in areas where topics will be discussed so I'm trusting God whether we be will be on a Facebook private group whether it be on telegram but somehow we will get in touch and but let me know if that's your interest let me know if we can do that and we will take it from there I'm blessed that you are part of this uh, platform and that you are subscribing to this platform and liking it and even sharing it may the Lord bless you for that we will both and I believe that the prophetic people in this time God's gonna raise us up together I believe that God's gonna uh, uh, grow us together and we're gonna grow together as well as a unit as a tribe if it comes to that but I believe something great is coming amen blessings again okay.